So for our number one, they want us to describe geometrically all linear combinations of these vectors. Um, so now let's think about accessing 3D space. To access 3D space, I need three vectors all pointing in completely different directions. In this case, V1, V2, and V3 are all um, 90 degrees to each other. So because they all point in different directions, I can access any point in space, right? Um, similarly, to access two dimensions, I need two vectors. I would need here uh, V1, V2, and if I have these two vectors, I can access any point here in 2D space. Right? But what happens if instead of V1 being pointed horizontally and V2 being pointed up, what happens if V2, say, was pointed in the same in the opposite direction here, but still on the same line, right? Maybe that is V2. Well, if it's pointing on this line, then I can't ever go up or down because there's no vectors, there are no vectors that add those components, right? So I would just be stuck in this 1D perspective. Um, similarly, here in 3D, what if my V1 didn't point up? What if my V1, what if it were here? So V1, and V1 is in the same plane as V2 and V3. Well, if V1 were there, I would never be able to go up or down because there are no vectors that um, add that up-down information, only the lateral information, right? And so what this means is that uh, Whenever we have, for example, in the in here, it would mean that V1 would be a linear combination of V2 and V3. So a linear combination means that it's stuck on the same plane or the same line as the other two vectors. So for us to be able to access all of space, we need things to be linearly independent. So let's check if they are linearly independent. So for A, um, if you look at this, we have that V1 is going to be equal to 1, 2, Three and v2 is going to be equal to uh, 3, 6, 9. So if you look at this, you can see that v, uh, v2 is going to be 3 times v1, right? Because 3 times 1, uh, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and so on. And so because these are linear combinations of each other, then we don't access 2D. We only access a single dimension. So this is stuck here in a line. So what about B? For B, we have the vector uh, 1, 0, 0, so that is V1, and V2, we have 0, 2, 3. Um, so we can see here quite easily that these are linearly independent vectors because V1 adds information about the first component, and V2 adds information about the second and the third component. So each vector adds in information about a new direction, right? So we're going to have two, um, two directions here. And so this is going to give us a plane. And let's look at item C. So for item C, we have 2, 0, 0. We have, that is V1. V2 is going to be, let's see, 0, 2, 2. And V3 is going to be uh, 2, 2, 3. So when we look at it, let's look at the first element. So the first element of V1 plus V2 is equal to V3. 2 plus 0 is equal to 2. The second element, 0 plus 2, is equal to 2. So it does look like it's linearly dependent, right? However, look at the third element. You have 0 2, and then 3. So the math doesn't add up, right? So whenever you have a linear combination, you can see that all the elements here are transformed in the first, in the same way. So uh, in, in the case of A, it was 1 to 3, and every single element followed that rule. So in C, um, it would be linearly independent if every single element in V3 were V1 plus V2. But we can see that there's one element that's different. So this means that this is not; uh, these are not linearly dependent. So we're going to have three vectors that are all linearly independent. So they add three dimensions of space, and so we can access um, all of our three. So all of space, right? And that is it for number one.